Hi, I'm Nate Moore, and today we're going to talk more about pivot tables. Specifically, we're going to take this pivot table, and we're going to go over here under the pivot table options menu and look at what the options are under this options drop down. Just a quick note, this pivot table 2 is the name of the pivot table, which doesn't matter much unless you get several pivot tables going on the same spreadsheet. If you want to change the name, you can easily click here and make the pivot table name whatever you want if that makes it easier for you to keep track of multiple pivot tables. The options menu here, we're going to talk today just about the layout and format tab, walk through some of the options, show you what they do. This merge and center cells with labels, watch what um, Dr. Buzz and Medicare do when we do this. You can't see any difference there. Now let me show you some different design options and see if you can see the difference. That's compact. That's outlined. See how it's centered and tabular form. See, it's centered, whereas if you come over here and return merge and center cells, now we're all the way left justified. If you've never been to this design tab, the three different report layouts, compact form looks like that, outline form looks like that, and a different uh, each category is in a different column. And that's what tabular looks like. I'm going to switch back to compact to show you what the next option is. This is when in compact form, indent row labels, and let's exaggerate it so you can see the difference. Watch what happens to Medicare here. It's, we're still in column A, unlike where we were before. Options, we move back to five. So you can control the gap between where this, or the indent between the start here and the start of the second category. So I'm going to go back to options, move this back to one. And while I'm here, I'm going to show you display fields in report area. You've got a choice of down, then over, or over, then down. If you do over, then down, notice how these filters are listed in one column in this example. And now they're in rows. Typically, I I don't know that I've ever done over then down. I always do down and over just because typically my data goes down this way as opposed to having a whole bunch of columns and it helps me to have it all in one place. But if you ever had a need, that's how to move these around. The other option, report filters for filter fields per column. If you do two here, what it will do is it'll say, all right, I'm going to put two in this column, two in this column, two in this, well, I've only got one left in this column and it spreads them out a little bit. So if you had lots of filters, on a pivot table and you didn't want to have you know a whole page full of filters and then show the data you can easily put multiple filters per column with that this last section is is easy to explain for error values or for empty cells you can control instead of having an empty cell there you can put no information or you can put you can type something in here to show in place of an empty cell these last two auto fit column widths on update and preserve cell formatting when you do the refresh data. If the data changes, what the pivot table is going to want to do is auto fit or widen the columns to the largest entry in each column as you go through. And it's also going to go back and do the default cell formatting as opposed to something different that you may have done when you update. So if I've got this pivot table to where I want it, particularly if I've got um, some design features in here, let's get some design features that are easier to see like that. I've got it just the way I want it. And you don't want to change. I almost always leave this box checked to preserve self formatting. Sometimes I will uncheck auto fit comments on update. If I'm looking at January, February, March, April, May, and I've got three letter abbreviations for each of the months, and I don't want it to expand out to show, you know, all in November and all in December because then my screen gets so big that I can't see more than three or four months going across the columns. So if, if I've got that, I'll turn this off, and it won't automatically widen the columns to the largest thing in there, which a lot of times is that December, November column heading. I hope some of that made sense. I'm going to go back and put it back the way it was. But there's a use for several of these in the Layout and Format tab, and I hope you found that helpful. You can also change the name up here, by the way, while we're, while we're up here. You can change the name of the pivot table just like you could over here right there. Next time we'll come back, we'll walk through some of these other tabs and give you a couple more options in formatting and displaying the pivot table.
Thanks for watching.